What's up YouTube, how you doing? This is Mr. Tybox123 and in this video I'm going to show you how to jailbreak the latest version of the firmware 4.4.4 for the Apple TV 2. Then I'm going to show you how to install Neato TV on the Apple TV 2 and then finally I'm going to show you how to install the Xbox Media Center on it and how to actually configure that up to connect to your Windows PC or your Mac and get it distributing DivX and XVID movies or any kind of movie you want across your Wi-Fi or your wired network directly to your Apple TV. Let's get going guys. Welcome back everyone. Now what we need to do first of all is we need to get our Apple TV and plug it into our computer using the micro USB cable. Now don't plug any power or HDMI or anything like that into it at this stage. It's literally just the micro USB cable and then what we'll do is we'll see that appear in iTunes like you can see here on the screen. Now after that what we need to do is download Season Pass. I'll leave the links in the description below and once we've got that downloaded we literally, all we need to do is just run it. So we open the program, we click create IPSW, and it's literally gonna do the rest for us. Now I'm gonna fast forward through a lot of this because it does take a little bit of time, but I'll stop on the relevant parts where we actually have to do something. Now what we have to do at this stage is grab our Apple TV remote, hold down the menu and the play pause button for seven seconds and then once we've done that release the two buttons and it's going to get it into DFU mode and then it's going to continue the jailbreak for us. You'll see that iTunes has killed itself off in the background. So that's seven seconds. Now the Apple TV should go into DFU mode and it has. If it hasn't try it again and make sure you get the timing right and then away we go we're going to start jailbreaking that device and we just leave it to run. Again, I'm going to speed this bit up and I'll come back to you at the end. Now once it's actually completed, we can then plug our Apple TV back into our television set, plug the HDMI cable in, plug the power cable in and make sure that it is going to be connected to some kind of wireless network or wired into the Ethernet network. And let's pick it up from there. Now, once you've got your Apple TV plugged back into the television set, it's gonna bring you up with a menu, and then we can just simply work our way through the menu. Choose the appropriate language. That's gonna go away now and activate, because I've actually got mine plugged in via the ethernet cable. And there you go. You can see now in the bottom right hand corner we've got the small logo which shows us that this particular Apple TV has been jailbroken and now we're ready to go on to the next stage which is installing Neato TV. So what you need to do next is go on to your settings, go to your general settings, go to network and then find out what your IP address is that you've been allocated. Now mine here is 192.168.1.112. Take a note of that and then head on back to your computer. Now that the jailbroking process is complete and we've plugged our Apple TV back into our TV set and got the IP address, we now need to open a SSH session directly to the Apple TV in order to install Neato TV. Now there's two ways of doing this. If you're on a Mac, you can just simply open up Terminal. If you're on a PC, you need to download something like Putty, for example, and simply enter the IP address of the Apple TV that you want to connect to. So, first of all, we need to just type this command, and I will leave all of the commands in the description down below. So we're simply going to do ssh root at 192.168.1.112, which is the IP address of my particular machine. And that's now going to go away over the network and connect us into the Apple TV remotely over SSH. Now once we're into that, we need to add an APT source. So we just simply paste the line that is going to be in the description below. That's the first one. And then we need to run an apt-get update to just update the APT sources to get hold of the new packages. Once we've done that, we need to then install the Neato TV package, so we just type apt-get space install space com.neato.neato.tv. 
say yes when it asks you if you want to continue and that's going to go away and actually install all of the Neato TV packages that we need to be able to install Xbox Media Center. Once we've finished SSHing into the Apple TV and installing Neato TV, just go back to your Apple TV, hold down the menu and the play pause button for a few seconds until the LED on the front flashes rapidly and then that's going to reboot the Apple TV and from that point on Neato TV should be available to us. And there we go guys, once you've rebooted your Apple TV after installing Neato TV, you'll then see the option for it in the main interface for your Apple TV. So we just go to Neato TV and then what we want to do is install software. And the software that we want to install is the Xbox Media Center for the Apple TV 2. So use your hand control to go over to that, click it, and then choose install. That's going to go away download the packages from the repositories and then install them on our Apple TV. As soon as that process is finished, we're then gonna have the option for Xbox Media Center on the Apple TV. Just click that, go into that, brings up the logo and takes us directly into Xbox Media Center running on the Apple TV. Now the best thing about having Xbox Media Center on your Apple TV is that you're no longer restricted to being able to stream videos, music, photos, etc. from iTunes. You can now do it from an FTP server or even from an SMB share on a Windows PC or a lot of other ways that you can actually connect to these different kinds of files. So let's start off with videos. We'll go to files and then what we're going to do is we're going to go add videos. Now. There's a couple of different ways in which you can actually connect to your videos. This is a list on the right hand side here of the different ways in which you can do it. Now probably the easiest way to do it is to use the SMB. Now a lot of the time people get this error of share not available. I don't understand what this is or where this comes from and I've googled it quite a lot to try and find out the answer but it's kind of good that it's happened because now we can actually look at how we would do the workaround for this. So that side of it is not working, so what we can actually do is we can use a network location. Now the best protocol to use if your SMB is not working is to use the FTP protocol. So choose FTP server from the list and then what you're going to need to do is enable an FTP server on your PC or your Mac. If you're running Lion, you need to Google it. It's a very simple way of enabling it because it's no longer a GUI. If you're on Windows, then you can either install it or you can download some kind of freeware package to do it. Once we've done that, we need to put our address in of our server. So in this case, mine is 192.168.1.100. Then we need to put the remote path in. Now my remote path is public. Port, the default is 21, and then we need to put our username and password in. Once that's done, we can go to our path and click it. And then straight away, it's going to bring up our list of all of our different movies that we've got. So we can say OK to that, say OK to that. We can choose our different scanning options, so maybe TV shows or movies. I'll choose movies. Say OK to that. Do we want to refresh all of the items? Yes. And then there we go. If we now click on files, we can go to public and then straight away we can go in and we can just run our favorite DivX or XVID videos. Let's just start one of these up so you guys can see what it's like. And there you go guys, that's our movie running streamed over the network directly to our Apple TV from either a Windows PC or a Mac. I hope that helped you. If it did, make sure you subscribe for more and I will see you all in the next video. See ya.